flowers. I love to have the whole place swimming in roses. God of heaven, there's nothing like nature. The wild mountains, then the sea and the waves rushing, and the beautiful country with the fields of oats and wheat and all kinds of things, and all the fine cattle going about that would do your heart good to see, and the rivers and the lakes and the flowers, all sorts of shapes and smells and colours springing up even out of the ditches, primroses and violets, nature it is. As for them that say there's no God, I wouldn't give a snap of my two fingers for all their learning. Why don't they go and create something, I often asked them, atheists or whatever they call themselves. Go and wash the cobbles off themselves first and then go howling for the priest and they dying. And why? Why? Because they're afraid of hell on account of their bad conscience. Ah yes, I know them well. Who was the first person in the universe before there was anybody that made it all? Who? Ah. Uh -huh. They don't know, neither do I, so there you are. They might as well try to stop the sun from rising tomorrow. The sun shines for you, he said. <laughs> the day we were lying among the rhododendrons on Hoth Head, in the grey tweed suit and his straw hat, the day I got him to propose to me. First I gave him the bit of seed cake out of my mouth. It was leap year then, like now, yes. Sixteen years ago, my God. After that long kiss, I near lost my breath. He said I was a flower of the mountain. Yes, so we are flowers. All a woman's body, yes. That was one true thing he said in his life. The sun shines for you today. <laughs> that was why I liked him, because I saw he understood or felt what a woman is, and I knew I could always get around him, and I gave him all the pleasure I could, leading him on until he asked me to say yes, and I wouldn't answer first, only looked out over the sea and the sky. I was thinking of all the things he didn't know of, Mulvey and Mr. Stanhope and Hester and Father and old Captain Groves and the sailors playing all birds fly and I say stoop and washing up dishes on the pier they called it and the sentry in front of the governor's house with the thing around his white helmet. <laughs> Poor devil half asleep and the Spanish girls laughing in their shawls and their tall combs and the auctions in the morning and the Greeks and the Jews and the Arabs and the devil knows who else from all the ends of Europe and Duke Street and the foul market and all the clucking outside and the poor donkey slipping half asleep and those vague fellows in cloaks asleep in the shade on the steps and the big wheels of the carts of the bulls and the old castle thousands of years old yes and those handsome moors all in white and turbans like kings asking you to sit down in their little bit of a shop and Rondo with the old windows of the posadas, two glancing eyes, a lattice hid for her lover to kiss the iron. And the wine shops half open at night, and the castanets, and the night we missed the boat at Algeciras, and the watchman going about serene with his lamp, and oh, the awful deep down torrent, oh, the sea, the sea, crimson sometimes like fire, and the glorious sunsets, and the fig trees in the Almeida gardens, and all the queer little streets and the pink and blue and yellow houses and the rose gardens and the jessamines and geraniums and cactuses and Gibraltar as a girl when I was a flower of the mountain when I put a rose in my hair like the Andalusian girls used. 
Shall I wear red? Yes. And how he kissed me under the Moorish wall, and I thought, wow. Well, as well him as another. And I asked him with my eyes to ask again. And yes. He asked me, would I? Yes. To say yes, my mountain flower. First I put my arms around him, yes. And then I drew him down to me so he could feel my breasts all perfume, yes. And his heart was going like mad, yes. And yes, I said, yes, I will. 